I guess I'll dive in first before Rudy does. Um, the Ravens completely bombed on Sunday. They came in. They were a confident bunch. But I think they just hyped us to hype to make us feel like they were better than they really were or how they really felt. They knew that to play Patrick Mahomes, they needed to bring their A game. And they told their minds, or they tried to tell us that they were ready for the game. And obviously what we saw on Sunday night, they were not ready. It seemed ill-prepared. I can't even say that because everything they did or did the whole year, they decided not to do in the biggest game of the season. They ran the ball 16 times total. And eight of those were Lamar. Let me repeat that. 16 times total, eight of those were Lamar. They gave their running back three carries for 20 yards. That is the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen in my life for a team that runs the ball 32 times a game for the regular season. You come into the playoffs, and what you do below 50-degree weather when you post a pound a team, you decide to air it out because let's prove a point. The point they tried to prove was that Lamar can stand in the pocket and throw the ball all day against the Chiefs. Why? You held a man back all year. You didn't run him as much as you normally does. You don't call as much run plays for him. And then you come, that's what you did that for, to save him for the playoffs, to unleash him unleash him for three games. You have the divisional game, the conference game, and the Super Bowl. You un, I mean, there's nothing else to play for after that. That's what you saved him for all year. And then you come into the playoffs, and you don't really run him. You don't use all of the, what he's good at. And that the most important game against one of the better defenses in the league. Actually, the Chiefs defense was actually statistically yards per game better than the Ravens defense. So they were playing a great defense. So when you're playing a great defense, the regular X's and O's is always not going to work. What can you do when the X's and O's are not on the table? And they had the best player to do that, which is Lamar, who can escape a pocket and, and break down a whole defense. But actually, when I, I actually really thought about it, Maybe he he can't anymore because even on the ball where he threw and got deflected and he caught it, man, two years ago, three years ago, Lamar would have been hitting his head against the goalpost. He would have caught that the ball that he that got deflected that he caught his own ball, he would have scored on. The other play where he ran the ball and he was looking at the DB, any other time, Lamar scores. Maybe he lost the step. Maybe he's not the same guy that we thought he was. And maybe that changed everything that we thought we were going to see. But they had a chance. They were in the game. Everybody came and said, oh, the Chiefs made them change the game plan. They were down seven points. <laughs> what are you changing what you did the whole year? Run the ball, man. What the heck is going on, man? I was so confused and dumbfounded by that. Their OC, Munkin or Munchkin, whatever they call him, I guess you call him Munchkin because he's strong. He put Lamar in bad predicaments, and he didn't put him in a predicament to, 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 to be great. And that's something, the most crucial time of the year that they didn't do that. Lamar Jackson choked, period. He choked. He, the reality is we have a situation where he is being given an MVP award, again, because he's going to win it, because there's a media narrative that pushes Lamar Jackson for some reason, which I don't know why. Um, he's, mid he's mid-level as a quarterback in throwing the ball. And being a quarterback means you don't need to throw the ball. If you can't throw the ball from the pocket, you're not a quarterback. He's a guy that can run, and he can't run as fast as he could run two years ago, or three years ago, or when he won the MVP in his second year. He can't run as fast. It's clear as day. He's not yeah. running. It's clear. And actually, they had six running plays to running backs. Six to running backs, who average over four yards a carry. The game plan by Todd Munkin was atrocious. At the same time, you have to be able to be, you have to complete passes. There were passes that were there that he missed, that he did not miss versus the Dolphins, that he did not miss versus the 49ers, that he did not miss last week. Last week, I said, the second half of that game, he played as good as I've ever seen. He was crisp. He was sharp. His QBR on Sunday was 42.9. Again, game plan <clears throat> definitely matters. But you have to be able to complete passes when they're there. The pass to Zay Flowers that Flowers committed the personal foul on was grossly underthrown. Underthrown by, I mean, Flowers was waiting for it. He stood there waiting. He was that wide open. If that ball is thrown on target, it's a touchdown. 
Now, that bites you in the ass when Flowers then fumbles going into the end zone. I mean, look, that was an effort play. Not the brightest play, but an effort play. So they lost seven points there. The, the throw into triple coverage in the end zone was absolutely the dumbest thing I've seen. I, I, I mean, God, I thought that was, that was Tua throwing the ball. Because that guy, I mean, he's triple covered. Deion Bush had just come in for the safety that got injured. I think it was his second play in the game, second play on the field, interception. Kid from Miami, University of Miami. Made a great play, but you cannot throw that ball. He cost them a field goal there. You have the best kicker in football. They left 10 points easily on the on the field. They got lucky as hell because he fumbled in the first half. You know, because he was patting, patting, patting the ball. Patting Take the off. ball. Take huh? off. Take off. Yeah. Go. Like, if, if you pat once, go. But he's not going because he, he can't go. That's if that if that game is four years ago, he has twenty runs. He had eight, and I mean, watching him pat the ball, he completed fifty four percent of his passes. He's being called the MVP because of their record, because they have a top shelf defense. Look, the first quarter and a half, the Ravens defense was trash. It was straight up garbage. But they gave up three points the last forty minutes of that game, and the Ravens, who scored twenty eight points a game, scored ten points. Chief defense is good, but the, but Lamar let him off the hook. He choked his ass off. I mean, bluntly, that's he did not play anywhere near the level of which he played all season long. Even uh, the Niners, the Dolphins. I mean, they were putting up monster numbers in those games. The first drive, he looked tight. He looked nervous. He was missing. Like I said, he was missing guys all game who were open. Well, and that throw, they, he was missing dudes. He was missing guys. And well, I, 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 go, go, go ahead. That, I'm sorry, Rudy, but that's my problem. If the quarterback you see is tight from the beginning, why won't you give him a bounce pass for a layup? Why are you still throwing him the ball out there outside the three point line, hoping him, hoping for him to shoot threes? Get the man to the free throw line. Give him a a, a, a technical foul shot. Uh, so something that he can. See the ball go in the rim. But we're not doing that. All we're doing is keep dropping back, dropping back, dropping back. Where's the play actions? Where's the, letting Lamar oh. run and get tackled a little bit so he could feel in tune with the game? Where are, Where is those decisions in that moment? Why are we calling plays like we're still in college? No, help your superstar quarterback out because you know if he gets his juices flowing, he's one of the most – dominant players in the league. But if you let him just sit there and not get into the game, that's what's going to happen. We've seen that he was tight. We've seen that they weren't playing as well as they usually do. But And it's below 50-degree weather, and you run the ball 32 times a game, but today you decide, no, we're going to throw it all day. What do we bring in Dalvin Cook for? What are we doing here? The Chiefs are a good – the Chiefs well, – that was a homeboy bring in. Okay, Dalvin we, Cook wasn't going to play in that game. A homeboy bring in. Okay, but what are we doing – like? His receivers, we said it from the get-go. We didn't think that they were that great besides the Zay Flowers. And obviously, Mark Andrews just got back in from injury. Odell Beckham is a shell of his of himself. He, he He's not that guy anymore. Bateman, first-round pick, he's almost considered a busted right now. Do the things that you've been doing. Like, you get here and you decide to be somebody that you're not. I don't get that. How does your running back have three carries? Where's the run? has options or just run options <laughs> like where it's between Lamar and, and Gus he's he's looking at the DN he's reading he handed off or he don't hand it off and he runs himself where are those plays what happened to it why did we forget how to play or coach football or play football in the most critical moment yeah maybe they did choke they choked and they all choked that Lamar choked the OC choked Harbaugh choked the, the, the whole I mean even in the first quarter and a half, you could say the defensive coordinator choked because the Chiefs went down the field twice with ease. I mean, they were right down the field with ease both times. And I'm going to be honest with you, if they don't get they, – they gave up a field goal attempt that would have made it 17-7. And they went for a fourth and one from the from the Ravens' 13-yard line, got stuffed. Um, I would have kicked the field goal. This thing of not kicking field goals in the playoffs <laughs> is, is – it can be costly, and we think we learned that in another game. But – uh yeah, I, I just thought he he played terribly, and I and I, at the end of the day, I 
He's going to win the MVP. I don't think he really should have won the MVP. Who should have won it then? Huh? Who should have won it then? Josh Allen. Josh Allen should have won it. Wow, the MVP. no way. Josh Allen, Josh Allen threw, has accounted for over 50 touchdowns. 50 touchdowns. Josh huh? Allen threw for upwards of 4,500 like 4, yards. Josh Allen had a monster season. And when I look at a quarterback who's – look, he won the MVP a few years ago throwing for – like he was 20th in passing. Josh he Allen won it because, I'm talking about – what? Josh Allen also put himself in a lot of those predicaments right. where he didn't go that much Yeah, wrong. you know what? That's fine. And if, if you want to be real about how good Baltimore is, they're really good because they run the ball. And they Lamar, run the ball. And, and, and a big part of that is because what, they, what Lamar but, can do running but, the ball. But, but they also have a line that bashes people. And, yeah, the game plan was shocking. But that goes back. Look, the second drive that the, the Ravens had, they went right down the field. Yeah, and it was like, okay, maybe we got something here, and then all of a sudden, it's like he can't. Then he couldn't make throws after that. It, it was weird. It was weird, and I agree that the the OC he shit the bed too. He shit the bed too, and he deserves all the criticism in the world for that. You know what? But, again, but you're the quarterback, and your job as a quarterback is to throw the damn ball. And if you see that you don't have anyone open, you take off because you can run. Even if you can't run as fast as you could run before, he, threw, he was 20 for 37. He threw 37 passes, man. I'm sure he's still faster than Tua. Yeah. So, <laughs> so go, man. I, go. I, oh, I'm sorry. You know who the – I'm sorry. The MVP should have been Tyreek Hill. But, um, um, but we knew that wasn't going to happen after the last – when the last two games happened. But Josh Allen realistically, I mean, had a killer season, man. I had no problem with Lamar. I have no problem with Lamar being an uh, MVP. <clears throat> but as we wrap this up, I just want to say – I don't know why OCs do this. I literally had a team. I played on a team this past year where we played a team before that was like to go to the playoffs and we needed to win. And our backup running back got the ball eight times for like 110 yards. We played the same team in the playoffs. Ask me how much carries that running back got in that game. Zero carries. It's the, I don't know why OCs trick themselves out of a game plan that wins, that's successful. Like, oh, they're going to come back and stop it. Well, make them stop it first, and then you you come up with something else. I I, I, I literally was in a game like, yo, what are we doing? We're, we took the lead, first of all, and then we got to stop. And then this guy never touched the ball, the most dynamic player that was probably on our roster who can who scared the shit out of the other team. And I, I was baffled. I was on the sideline like, what the fuck? I almost called them dumb. But they're like that's I wouldn't want to go that far, but it's it's, it's, it's dumb. It's what, dumb. What are we doing it, here? It's it's like general managers that draft a quarterback who sucked in college and they think they're gonna make him a star in the NFL. Daniel Jones, Mitchell stop Trubisky. Stop overthinking. Mitchell, like, you stop. don't you don't you don't pick Daniel Jones and Mitchell Trubisky in the top five. Like what do we top six? What are we doing? They both stunk in college. And who was picked behind Mitchell Trubisky? Patrick uh, Mahomes. Who was yeah. a baller in college? Patrick uh, Mahomes. 